My name is Christian Rehm, and I'm a senior and flight operations pathway student at the Alliance Academy for Innovation. I'm here today with industry professionals from the distribution and logistics pathway. This is another trade talk as part of our ongoing series of learning from business and industry in our community. We as middle and high school students have very important decisions to make around high school career pathways and as we begin thinking about life after graduation. We hope these trade talks will help our students and families have these discussions at home. Your counselors can also help you in identifying courses that fit into your future career aspirations. Before we get started, I'd like to ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves, telling us your name, company, and position there. Oh, thank you. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Uh, good morning. I'm Chris Powderly. I work for UPS. I am an HR manager. I've been with the company about 20 years. My name is uh, Russ Marzen. I'm the SVP on the executive team, and I'm with Cardinal Logistics for three years. Again, we thank you both for being with us today. So now we will get right into our questions that were recently submitted by some of our high school students. What motivated you to go into the field of distribution and logistics? We'll start with you. Uh, yeah, interesting question. What motivated me to go into distribution and logistics? I don't know that I originally planned it, but I kind of found my way into it, and it ended up being a good fit. There's constantly challenges different customers you deal with, different requirements, no one day is the same. So I personally like that challenge. I like the, the variety of different people I interact with. And uh, it's what's kept me there to this day. Well, I'm, I'm kind of like Chris. Uh, Transportation logistics and supply chain really wasn't a well-defined program uh, when I was in high school. It really wasn't a specific major. So um, not really knowing what I wanted to do out of high school, I joined the military. And I was always amazed by the the ability for the military to move around a large number of assets and supplies quickly with short notice. And that was my first intro to it. And then when I exited the military and went to college, when I was asked to select a minor, uh, they had a logistics group. And I worked at a warehouse at night, and I still found it very interesting. So I, I selected the supply chain logistics path, and it's been great ever since. Very nice. And what classes would you recommend students take in high school that would help them have a chance at going into the field of distribution and logistics? Well, you seem to have a, a unique high school here, so you might have more opportunities than other students. Um, I would say focus on your core business classes, your business finance, economics, marketing. Uh, as an HR manager, I would actually throw in there if you have the opportunity to take an HR class. I do think that's important. A huge part of this, this business is interacting with people, and your success at being able to do so will drive a lot of your bottom line interactions with your customers as well as your workforce. Um, when you get into more specialized classes, you know, transportation, logistics, uh, warehouse management, there, there's, it's somewhat of a difficult question to answer only because there's so many specialties within distribution and logistics. Some of you might be more uh, interested in industrial engineering, let's say. And in that case, you'd have all those specialized classes with, with engineering. And just to add to the ones already mentioned, uh, cost accounting, uh, uh, any finance programs, Public speaking is a, a, a program you should probably get into. You will have a lot of opportunities to be in front of customers and large groups of staff members, and you want to be able to speak proficiently. I would suggest taking a foreign language. You should, it's great to have at least one additional language in, in your, in your, on your resume. And describe some of your daily interactions with people. Do you work in groups or on your own daily? What jobs do you do? And how do your interactions affect your job? So um, I guess you let me know if you want me to answer it from a different perspective since I work in HR, but we support operations at Human Resources as a support function. And uh, there's certainly times where I work alone, but I do have a team, and I rely heavily on that team, and our teams support the operations. A lot of the operations we support can, can uh, vary in discipline. We have warehouse warehouses where we uh, house inventory for customers, and we pick and pack their product and ship it out as orders come in. So we'll have hourly warehouse associates that go and find the product, pack it in the bins, get it sent out to make sure we meet customer deadlines, and they also have supervisors and managers that manage those operations. We also have uh, freight operations where we have folks operating forklifts, uh, moving around heavy freight to load them onto the trucks, whether it be less than truckload uh, operation or a truckload operation, and how we move that heavy freight across the U.S. and across the, the globe for that matter. Does, does that kind of give you yeah. a little bit of insight? Yeah. Okay. 
Great. I, I, likewise, I do tend to work with a large number of groups on my team. Uh, we are focused on growing our existing customer base and uh, looking at new customers. So I have a lot of opportunity to work with our IT staff, HR, sales, and operations because it kind of takes that united team effort to come up with pricings uh, and plans to, to determine what works best for the customer, what pricing is in line with what their expectations are from a service perspective. So we spend a lot of time on that side, and then obviously once we sell the business, we have the daily operations, so probably better than 40% of my time is spent directly with the operating teams supporting them. Very nice. And what are some skills that students need to have in order to do your job? What do they need to be good at? What sort of education beyond high school do they need to have for this job? I'm going to let Russell go first since I feel like I'm stealing the thunder <laughs> first. I'll let him answer first on one. Well, thanks, Chris. Uh, First of all, the, the great thing about supply chain is, you know, there's different levels and, and uh, to entry. So you could, you can work your way into this industry, and I've seen people work their all the way up to the top. Uh, Walmart CEO is a great example. Start out in the warehouse, now he's the CEO of the company. Um, perfect world, if you could, it'd be great to get a four-year degree. It just kind of boosts you into the marketplace. It, it just gives you kind of a structure to what your life is going to be like in the, in this profession. Um, so as a starting point, that would be my recommendation if you can to get a four-year degree in the supply chain industry. Yeah, so um, I, I agree with what Russell's saying. You, you know, if you, I think hands-on experience is huge. With UPS, a lot of people started entry level and worked their way up. That's obviously changed some with, with specialized disciplines, like I mentioned industrial engineering, for example. There's also quality assurance associates in our healthcare warehouses where they have very specialized training. But to learn the operations from the ground up is invaluable. So you could, right out of high school, for example, come work in one of our warehouses and learn how we pick pack product, how we manage the warehouse, and you could get a lot of experience and, and work your way into a supervisor role and then on to manager. We do prefer that our uh, folks in leadership rules do have, uh, roles do have a degree. It's not always necessary, but it is a growing, uh, a growing need that I see in our business. So I do recommend you get some kind of degree. I wouldn't overly stress on the exact discipline unless you are going to, into a very specialized role like industrial engineering. That becomes more critical. But if you focus on your core business classes and get a lot of hands-on experience, you can definitely work your way into a leadership role. Very nice. And what are the skills that are most important for a position in this field? What kinds of people experience the greatest success in this field? And when people leave this career, what are the usual reasons? Well, I can, I can start, Chris. Uh, skills, I think one of the critical skills I've seen in a consistent successful skill is work ethic. Um, it's a program where there's a lot of activity going on, and, and uh, it's, timing is important. Um, there's a lot of time expectations, uh, so you have to be focused on that. And a good work ethic is a strong base to, to the position. Um, as we mentioned earlier, you know, some of the... the Curriculum skills, uh, just math and accounting and finance, because normally you'll have some sort of P&L responsibility. Um, so you have to kind of understand how those, how that format works. Um, I, in, in the industry itself, I, I personally have not seen a lot of people leave the industry. I've seen a lot of people move around within the industry because there's so many different things you can do within the industry. So as they get exposed to different things, they realize, hey, I kind of really enjoy that. Um, and so they, they trend to kind of slide parallel to, to the industry itself, but I have not seen a lot of people leave it. I'll just add, um, as far as what skills are most important for a position in this field, I do think a solid business command of business understanding is, is required, but speaking from an HR manager standpoint, I will tell you that my most successful operators are the ones that understand how to manage their people. Uh, it's one thing to understand operations, it's another thing to understand how to uh, motivate and take care of your team. And I find that they don't always match up. So uh, the ones that perform and excel the best have found a way to do both disciplines. It's kind of like when you get a, a teacher, like a great teacher. It's rare to find a great teacher, but also somebody that's great at applying what they teach. It does happen, um, but it's a little bit more, it's, it's a little harder to find. So similarly in an operation, if you know how to motivate your team, be consistent, be fair with your operation, those folks are going to work harder for you. It's going to be easier for you to meet customer expectations. Where I see people get into trouble is when they come in and they're really good at understanding the numbers, but they, they focus on only the numbers and they drive their people into the ground. And then when the customer says, hey, I've got an iPhone launch and um, we're, we're gonna be working 10, 12 hour days versus your normal eight, 
one operator is able to meet those guidelines because their people will turn around and, and give them everything that they have because they know that their manager has their back, whereas other people are struggling to meet that. And that happens all the time, at least that I've seen in, in my experience with distribution and logistics. There's always some special launch, some special project. Customer has very high expectations. You have to be able to manage your team. Well, thank you. I know our conversation was brief, but on behalf of myself and all of the CTAE students in Forsyth County, we thank you for your valuable advice in helping middle school students decide which high school pathway they are going to pursue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.